Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 tools that you should know in Kali Linux. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share, and let's keep growing, and let's jump onto the desktop and have some fun. All right, folks, so here we are. So. What I want to do is showcase 10 tools that I think is super, super useful to know for pen testing, for uh, CTFs, for ethical hacking, for bug bounties, whatever you want to do. There's a million of them, right? There's a million tools, but these are tools that, you know, I think that are pretty useful. And if there's any missing, throw it in the comments and what are ones that you use on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or whatever, your top tools. So this is for 2024 you know, mid year. So yeah. So I have 10 here that I want to go over. And obviously, it's not in any particular order. I just want to put that out there. It's not like, okay, number one is the best. I was just going through what I do on a daily basis and what tools I use. And I was asked so many times, what are the best tools to use? There really isn't any best tools. It's whatever tools you need to do the job. It's like, what are your favorite tools to? I don't know. Uh, Break a bottle. You can smash it with a hammer. You can hit it a long time with a screwdriver. You can just bang it on the floor. There's a million ways to break a bottle, right? So same way, like whatever, you know, floats your boat, floats your boat. So the number one tool I have on here is the set toolkit. So I really like this. This is probably one of my favorite. And social engineering toolkit pretty much is available in Kali Linux. And what this does, it simulates social engineering, right? So what is social engineering? It's, you know, to manipulate the humans and BS them into clicking on a link and doing bad things if, you know, if you want to use it for malicious activity, right? I would never condone that. So, yeah, but you can simulate a wide range. You can see here, you can go into whatever, for an example, number one, social engineering attacks. You can see what kind of attacks are here. For an example, if you want to create a payload listener, so when they click on something, it calls back to you whatever, right? So that's, you know, number one on the list and we will exit that for now. And the second one I have on my list is Wireshark. I use Wireshark a lot. And what Wireshark really is, and I'm gonna open it just so you guys can see it. And I wanna put ETH zero, cause that's my, that's my uh, interface on my network. And for example, we'll go ahead, it's running right now. And we'll go out to like, for an example, uh, google.com, right? So we'll go out to google.com. Now we should start seeing some packets in here and we can stop this by hitting the little red button up here and we can zoom this in, I, I think, let's see. Yep, we can zoom that in and we can see the time, the source, which this is my source, right? My source of my computer is 200, I think. I don't even know. I'm pretty sure that's my machine. Let's just see really quick. And let's just make this bigger. And let's just do an IPA. And I'm at 200, so that is me. Okay? So this is an awesome, awesome tool to know, to understand packet analyzing. If we see the protocols, you can see the what's uh, cooking over here. And you can see TLS, which is you know HTTPS, uh, TCP, DNS because it queried google.com and a whole bunch of other stuff, right? And what the cool thing about this is you can start coming here and for example, put in DNS and you can start querying and filtering out whatever tool or whatever protocol you wanna see, whatever destination, etc. So this is definitely something that you, you, uh, you wanna have in your arsenal, right? So Wireshark is numero dos. All right, we'll say close, quit without uh, saving. And that's the number two, right? So the, the third one, I have three. I have John the Ripper and Hashcat, right? So I'll just do John first. And for example, let's do John dash dash help, All right? So John the Ripper is pretty much a tool that we can utilize for, you know, it, it was designed for like sysadmins and hackers and network admins to check and find weak, easy passwords to crack, right? And pretty much we can see it here in different kinds of uh, switches and options here. 
you, you know, obviously this is not a, a video to showcase how to use the tools, but John the Ripper is definitely one. And obviously the next one, it, it, it goes along with here, Hashcat. Hashcat, I'm just gonna do dash dash help. And there's a whole bunch of stuff here. And what this is gonna do is try to crack hashes, right? So say for example, you find like an LTLM v2 hash, which is a Windows user hash, right? And now you can take that and utilize it uh, against this, you copy it, you paste it into a file and you put that file into here and you run this again against a word list and you can go ahead and try to crack that password or the hash and get the password that resides in it. The next one here I have on my list, which I've been tinkering with a little more than usual is SQL map. So SQL map, I want to do dash dash help. So SQL map, this detects, you know, SQL injections inside of a web application. So you can utilize this as a, an awesome tool. And again, this is not a, a video to actually showcase how to use them, but you know, you can tinker with this SQL map and uh, really, really learn this because this is going to be super useful for your career. If you're becoming a pen tester, especially if you're doing web app stuff and, and SQL stuff and all that, all that stuff. All right, stuff, stuff, stuff. So that's the fourth one, right? So the fifth one I like, but I wanna do a video just on Wi-Fi hacking tools. I thought that would be really cool. But Aircrack NG, Aircrack NG is awesome. Obviously I don't have any, I don't have a wireless card in this machine. This is my main machine. And I do have a wireless card behind me, which I'm gonna probably plug into here or I'll probably connect it to my laptop, RDP to my laptop and do it like I normally do. But you can see Aircrack NG is definitely something you want to tinker with if you want to get into Wi-Fi hacking, right? So definitely, you know, static uh, WP cracking, which is really old, but then you can do WPA, uh, WPA2. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, good stuff. So learn how to use Aircrack NG if you're looking for Wi-Fi hacking tools, right? The next one here is another one that I've been tinkering with more is Burp Suite. So Burp Suite, you know, is mainly used for web application testing. I think it's an awesome tool. I'm still learning it. I'm not a pro at it. I'm going to be honest. I'm the first one to to speak on my uh, expertise. Uh, da -da 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 -da, may have some problems. Okay, I don't know what happened here. Is it just taking a minute? Yeah, it's just taking a minute. So. Um, this is a new VM, so uh, no, I don't want to update that now. So let's just start Burp right quick. And yeah, this is just a set of tools, like you can do proxies, you can do, you know, it's a web application tool, and it can identify weaknesses in a web application as well. And you can go like, for example, proxy, and you can have uh, on your browser, um, you can have Foxy Proxy or something like that. I don't have any of that because this is a brand new VM. I haven't even set up anything on this VM, but yeah, this is another tool that you should definitely learn and get used to. There's a few others that do pretty much the same thing, but you know, Burp Suite is pretty, pretty much the one across the board. All right. So that's number six. Number seven is Netcat. So Netcat is, I'm going to go ahead and exit this. So let's see if I can do Netcat dash dash help. So I guess we can't do that dash dash H. Yeah. So what this is going to do netcat is is a simple, simple utility that we can read data across the network, we can listen in to incoming connections, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty cool. So say, for example, if I do netcat um, dash, I want to do LV P for an example, which is the options right here, listen mode, V is for robust and the port. So say for example, port 8080. And now we're listening in on this, Any anything that's coming into our machine, listening on port 8080, you know, we can get like reverse shells and stuff like that. Okay, so it's, it's a really, really useful tool, especially if you're getting into CTFs and stuff like that, because you want to have a machine that's listening on your local hacker machine or your local Kali, whatever, and then listen in and then have a call home. <laughs> and the last, uh, 
the number eight is nmap. So I want to do nmap dash dash help. So nmap is probably could have been on the top of the list. So nmap is a network mapper. So oh, that's that's netcat. Sorry. So let's come up here. So for example, if we want to see a target, we want to map out a a network. So for example, 192.168.0.1, which probably is like a router or something. So we can scan whole networks, as you can see here. Um, there's so many. There's so many things you could do with net uh, uh, and map. So yeah, pretty much it's a it's an open source Linux tool that we can utilize for like host discovery. I'm just looking at all my tools here: security auditing, network exploitation, vulnerability scanning. It can do a lot. So that's number eight on the list. All right. So these are all ones that you should know or at least get to know. So the next one is Nikto. So Nikto, let's do uh, that. It's pretty much an open source uh, web server scanner. So it, it scans for vulnerabilities on a web server. And you can see, let's come all the way up here. You can see the different options. We can do invasion. These are pretty much encoding techniques. These are pretty cool. I've used a few and I do use a few. Um, Format, you can say different formats, SQL, TXT, XML, etc. You know, obviously you have to identify a host, you know, because you're gonna be scanning against a host. And yeah, so you can obviously just tinker with this. This is another good tool if you're doing web apps. And the final one is MSF console. So MSF console is Metasploit. Metasploit is just a open source framework that comes within Kali Linux. And it's it's an awesome tool that if you, you know, it's a C2 framework, a like command and control. And as you see here, it has, you know, 2,300, almost 2,400 exploits, 1,235 auxiliaries, um, 200, uh, 422 posts, payloads, 13, almost 13, 1,400 payloads, etc. So, you know, this is an awesome tool to get to learn a beginner C2, uh, you know, understanding this. And uh, let me exit that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That concludes this video on the top 10 tools that I use. There's other tools like Bloodhound and a whole bunch of like Active Directory pen testing tools that I use, but I don't wanna go on and on and on about a whole bunch of tools. I think these are some good ones when I was doing like a lot of CTFs, you know, before I got into the whole Active Directory world, these were good ones that I use on a daily basis. Uh, during those uh, engagements or CTFs and stuff like that. But if there's anything that I miss, please put it in the comments below because I really want to see what your top 10 are, right? So if there's a top 10 or maybe a top five tools that you utilize on a daily basis or on an engagement, obviously it all depends on the engagement, right? But let's hear your input. So put it in the comments below. And until next time, have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for viewing and see you soon.